Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. Today we'll be looking at creating heel sound effects for video games. What I find interesting about heel sound effects is that unlike other sound effects we've been creating in previous videos, we're going to be adding a musical element. Now you're going to need three things to create these sounds. One, you're going to need a audio recording device. I'll be using my basic iPhone. Number two, you're going to need a digital audio workspace or commonly referred to as a DAW. I will be using Logic Pro X. Popular free versions are Pro Tools First and Studio One Prime. I'll link the downloads in the description below. And finally, number three, the most important one, bring your creativity. You can have the best equipment, but it's not really going to mean anything if you're not creative. To start, watch your reference clip multiple times to get ideas. Don't be afraid to act out the sounds with hand gestures and mouth sounds. For our example clip, we will be sound designing this heel ability. Be sure to slow down the clip to really break it down. It's harder to see the details in real time. I will be breaking down this ability into two parts, a charge up and a cast. Once you have a general idea of what you want your sound effect to sound like, it's time to grab your audio recording device and start hunting for sounds. For the charge up, I will scratch a leather couch for a good general charging ability sound and rustle some shredded paper for the pink energy swirls. For the cast, I will use the same couch as before and slide my palm on it. Squish the shredded paper. Slap my thigh for a nice impact. Now once you've recorded all your sounds, it's time to open up your digital audio workstation and import them all to start layering them. Keep in mind the positions of the transients when layering. They will help guide you when stacking your sounds. Transients are the peak or spike of a sound where they experience high amplitude for a short duration. Play around with how you stack your audio as well as how you fade them in and out. I find stacking your transients on top of each other makes for a stronger impact sound while fading out your audio with a strong curve can make it smaller. In Logic, you can press A to bring up the automation screen. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, we'll be adding a musical element to our sound effect. I find bell, chime, and harp sounds work best for healability sounds. We can apply a little bit of music theory by stacking the perfect fourth and perfect fifth interval. The perfect fourth interval makes the listener feel an angelic presence, while the perfect fifth interval makes the listener feel cheerful. This is what helps give our ability a heel theme. I will link a video in the description that goes over music intervals and how to use them to create a specific mood. When you're happy with your layered arrangement, we can start applying processing effects. For this heel ability, we'll be using a combination of EQ, pitch shift, compression, chorus, and reverb. I like to compare EQ to shaping a clay statue. We can mold our audio elements into a cohesive sound that complement each other. By boosting or cutting frequencies, we can accent certain elements in our sound effect. With that said, EQ is the first effect I use. Pitch shifting is a great effect for adding weight to a sound by shifting it down or making it sharper by shifting it up. We can lower the pitch of our scratch, slide, and slap sounds to thicken them up. Use the mix knob for taste. After pitch shift, we can finalize the loudness as well as reshape the transients with compressor. 
We can start by setting the loudness with the threshold and ratio parameters. The threshold sets a loudness checkpoint, while the ratio sets the volume level after it passes the loudness checkpoint. For example, setting a 2 to 1 ratio means that the sound will be half as loud after passing the threshold. After setting the loudness, we can turn to our attack knob to shape our transients. If the attack knob is set to 0, then the ratio will come into effect right away. The longer the attack, the longer it takes for the ratio to kick in. It is most noticeable on the impact sound. A great effect to use for an ability sound is a chorus. Chorus can help widen your sound and make it sound less flat. We can set a frequency to target, intensify it, and then mix it to taste. I find the higher the frequency, the wider the effect. Once you have applied EQ, pitch shifting, compression, and chorus, we can quickly go back to our EQ and automate frequencies to add more movement to our sound. After applying our gain-based effects, we can turn to our reverb, which can be classified as a time-based effect. Reverb is the go-to effect for adding depth to a sound. I typically like to use a combination of a small and large reverb. Because I use two reverb sizes, I can use the small reverb to bring forward certain elements, then use the large reverb to glue the spaces together. Now after brainstorming, recording, layering, and processing, we can finally hear our finished sound in action. Thank you for watching everybody. I hope this video gave you a couple ideas how to approach your next sound design project. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this tutorial video and don't forget to subscribe to not miss any new content. If you have any sounds you'd like me to create, drop them in the comment below and until next time. Cheers.